Hi, everybody. This is Nick Dressler. Uh, if you're like me, you, you are trying to find all the time new web tools or web applications that you can use in the classroom. Um, and and one, of the, one of the problems with this is that a lot of times you can jump onto the train early on in the life cycle of a particular application uh, that never, never really makes it or, or never makes improvements. Um, and it seems like sort of a waste of time to figure it out to use in class when uh, when it's not there for the long haul. Uh, then the, the other issue is that when, when an application like this gets really popular, it seems like everybody's doing it in, in, uh, in every class, right? Like it was like Jeopardy when I was in, when I was in school, one teacher had the idea of doing Jeopardy. Um, and then that became literally the best lesson for every teacher in a year, uh, was the day that they, with the day that they played Jeopardy, right? So like you'd, you'd have one, time when you played Jeopardy in English class, and then maybe a quarter later, you were playing Jeopardy in history. Uh, but th they didn't know, I mean, like this went all the way back to third grade when we were playing Jeopardy in, in math class or, or in social studies or whatever. And so um, the idea that like something that is good and does work in class gets picked up uh, and appropriated, and then, and then the student is doing it all the time. And most recently, I think this has happened with Kahoot. Um, I'm, I'm sure everybody's aware of Kahoot, and I remember when Kahoot came out, I was at a conference and uh, brought it back to school, and we played it for a review, uh, like an AP review um, before the AP test, and it went really well. And by the next year, um, students were doing that in, in every class, and it seemed like almost doing Kahoot at that point was now boring, right? Like you're just doing the same, now they're, now they're playing Kahoot seven times a day, uh, or before every test or whatever, and it kind of loses the the, uh, the the gamified nature because it becomes so rote uh, and so such a sort of cliche and workaday way of going through um, going through school. So here's here's a here's a newer one. This is like Kahoot, and it does the same thing that Kahoot does. It's called Blook It, and the reason that I'm talking about this today and, and sort of recommending it is because unlike Kahoot, that has one game. Uh, which is roughly based on answering correctly and answering quickly. Uh, look at adds in some other gameplay elements that you might find on games that the students are already playing on their computers when they're supposed to be listening uh, or on their phones, like idle clickers or uh, something where they are slowly building up points in order to buy certain things. And what this does is it kind of gamifies the elements of, of class and it works quite well race and you can see over here on the left this is what the teacher would see this is the game identification and each student gets to pick like a different barnyard animal and as the game goes uh and and the game starts here they get their their questions here on the side and it's very much like um very much like kahoot and as they get the, I, I guess we're doing a, a spanish lesson as they get them right uh, their character moves forward and if they get a certain streak they get a little power up which can either make their character move faster or they can hold back um, another character a lot like you would see in Mario Kart or something like that. And the kids get pretty into it. I would say the younger level, like if you're talking freshman or, or lower, that this, this activity tends to work best with them. But again, when looking at it from an AVLI perspective, that this is something that you can do uh, once or twice with, with, your, um, with your virtual classrooms because you don't need to be in person for this. Moving on to the next one, uh, this is the Candy Rush. So you probably are, are familiar with Candy Crush. This is kind of a, a Candy Candy Crush knockoff here um, for uh, for review. And so we've got the same kind of test here, or same kind of review, where the the students are working on um, uh, working on on their Spanish. And as they get a question right, they get to collect. Uh, they press on a certain jack-o'-lantern here, and then they, there's kind of like a, a, a surprise amount of money in, in it, and what they're trying to do is get get them correct, and then they move up they move up the level. And then they can get different power-ups again where they can take certain candy from other characters. Uh, they can double their own candy, etc. And so... Again, it's just like uh, Kahoot, except the, the way that the points are tallied is just a little bit different from game to game. And then the last one I'll show uh, is called Factory, and this is the one that, that I've used the most often. And in this one, uh, the students are 
here, uh, they they answer questions correctly, and then they get to hire certain workers with with the points that they acquire. And then as they hire the workers, um, the workers make different money, and then and then uh, and then accrue more points for them. But then they can sell a certain amount of these points for different power ups that can either uh, give them faster point tallies or can put some sort of bug on the screen, which makes it harder for other character, or sorry, other players to answer their questions correctly. So it might blur the screen or make it spin around um, so that the so that the other uh, players can't do it. So right here, what they're doing is tallying up to a level, and then when they get to a certain level, they get a little they get a little power up here uh, by getting several in a row, and then the money that they accrue is at the top. Now the good thing about this, all of these is that in each case, and here's here's where the the homepage it looks just like the homepage for for Kahoot. It's pretty easy to to figure out, um, but it, but in each case, the student is still doing the review, the uh, answering questions, etc. Uh, but they just get a little bit more involved in terms of in terms of gameplay. There's a little bit of gotcha, um, and maybe a, the student who who uh, cannot seem to get as many questions correct as fast as as the other students still has a chance based on other types of, of strategy uh, like game theory and stuff that, that could come into play in these games. Whereas in Kahoot, if you don't answer, even if you know the answer and think about it, if you don't answer, if you don't answer it quickly, there will still be someone who answered it and answered it faster than you did. And so that really only works for things that are strictly memorization, like state capitals or something like that. But, but this one, because of the other, the other type, like speed matters, but it's not the only thing. And so, uh, it, it's better probably for um, higher level higher level courses there. And again, this is just a, a good recommendation for um, any student to to get, to play, I would say, but also for any teacher to to give it a shot. Um, the way that I the way that I did it was we went through it a, a few times um, with with some of the review elements, and then I just asked the students which ones that, which ones which of the games they like to play the most, and then the next time we did that one. Um, uh, to, to review. So uh, give this a shot, see see uh, see how it goes. It's, it's not for everybody. It's certainly not for every situation, but you might find that if you're trying to liven it up a little bit and you don't want to do Jeopardy and Kahoot like everyone else, then you can get on Book It here before it gets super popular.